Uh, okay, folks, uh, I'm back. Uh, I apologize for the, the uh, long delay in getting the next one out, and I'm, this one's going to kind of be a shoot from the hip here. Um, I'm going to do one here for the guys who are a little bit more advanced uh, and as a refresher for guys who've been out there, but I'm going to do a simple latching motor control circuit. Um, and we're just going to do the control circuit. We're not going to do the power circuit. Uh, I'll do that again uh, later. Uh, but this is going to be... Uh, the information, things that you need to know about this and how a basic uh, three-wire latching circuit works, okay? <clears throat> so, we're going to be doing a ladder diagram. Uh, in industry, the schematic diagrams are not as effective because uh, uh, unlike working on a car uh, type uh, situation, um, you need to know the logic uh, of how is this circuit working. When the machine does not run, what does it take for this machine to run? What does it take for this light to come on? What does it take for this pump to come on uh, and such? So ladder diagrams or logic diagrams are what's, what is used uh, the majority of the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, at work right now, I'm rebuilding or redoing a uh, machine that one of the gentlemen I worked with who passed away here recently, unfortunately, uh, he rebuilt a, uh, a bin lift and he converted it from 120 volt control circuit to 24 volt DC control circuit. And, uh, but he made us a, a wiring diagram instead of a logic diagram. So we knew where the wires went, but it didn't help us when it came to troubleshooting. We had a lot of problems with it because he, he was not able to finish it and proof it before he passed away. Uh, it was an unexpected passing. It wasn't like he had cancer or something like that. He had, unfortunately he had a heart attack, but <clears throat> um, the logic diagrams are what industrial maintenance guys in particular need to be able to troubleshoot uh, a system. So the first part of this is a 24 volt DC and you'll see on this side is your zero volts DC or the negative. Okay. So on this, I'm going to pull it down this side, make sure everybody can see. First thing is a normally closed e-stop. Now what makes this a normally closed e-stop is this mushroom head right here. So when you press this one, it's going to stay off. It will not come back on uh, automatically. It, it takes two actions. It takes typically a twisting and a pulling to get this to come on. And the next one is your stop. Okay. The next one is going to be your on okay and then after that we will have our uh motor contactor okay and after that we'll have our overload contacts okay so with this we start looking at the, the terminal numbers on a normally closed set of contacts it's going to be a one or a two okay that is uh, that is an industry standard uh, for normally closed uh, switches or contacts. Okay, so a normally open is going to be a three and a four on your arm on the basically it's an armature. So this is going to be a one and a two, and over here on your overloads it's going to be ninety five and ninety six. Okay, so those don't those overload contacts don't get confused with any of your other contacts. Now there's one piece that we're missing right now for this to work. Right now, if we press this switch, the, the, the contactor would come on and the motor in itself would come on. But as soon as you let that switch up, it would uh, it would stop. Okay, so what we need is a latch, and that latch comes down here like this. Okay, and this is going to be 13, 14, and if you'll notice the 3, 4, this is normally open, this is normally open, this is normally closed, normally closed, okay? So let me come back over here on this side. So you've got power coming from this side and it's trying to get to this side right here. So your e-stop is a normally closed switch, your stop is a normally closed switch. Your on is a, is a normally open switch. Uh, 
these are actually push buttons is what these are representing. Um, and they're, these are only, this is only momentary. This is momentary. When you press this one and release it, it'll return back to its normal state. Like I said, with the e-stop, when you press this, it'll stay off until you do, there's typically two actions that you have to do with that. You have to twist it and pull it for it to be able to pop back out and then re reset itself. That's done on purpose. If somebody's getting hurt or the machine's getting damaged, you want that to shut off and you don't want it to come back on uh, just because the power is restored. Okay, so, um, but anyways, when this, when this works, the way this works, power is always at the following locations. Always have power here, 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 and here. Okay, and what I mean by that is if this is 24 volts DC, if you take your meter and you check from here. And we go to here, we'll get 24 volts. Okay. If we go to here, 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 and here, we'll always get 24 volts at any one of those places as long as we have 24 volt from our power supply at that location. Now that's when the machine is on, but it's not running. Okay, so when you go to do troubleshooting, if you, uh, the guy, your operator says, man, I push this button right here, but the machine won't come on. Um, there's some other parts of troubleshooting. We're starting to look at master control relays and safety relays and make sure you got four green lights or however many green lights that, that uh, safety relay has. But if you have to get your multimeter out, if you don't have power here, then you need to check to the next one. If you don't have it there, you need to come and check to the next one. And, and as you guys get along in your, uh, in your troubleshooting uh, abilities and understanding of this of these circuits, you can do a little bit more jumping. You know, uh, some folks will start at the end, some folks will start at the beginning. Um, start at the beginning and say, do I have power here? If you have power there, then you can kind of jump to the next one. Do I have power here? Then you go here, do I have power here? And do I have power at this contact with this normally open set of contacts that is controlled? These contacts here are controlled by that armature right there. Okay, so all you have to check here is that terminal 13 is a screw head. You can put your your uh, your red lead on and see if you, if you don't have 24 volts at any one of those, there's there's a problem. And if it's 24 volts between that terminal screw and this terminal screw, I can almost guarantee you, you've either got a bad termination, i.e. a screw that didn't get turned correctly and tight, or you've got a cut wire somewhere. Okay. <laughs> so... There's not going to be any power at 14, 4, A1, A2, 95, 96. There won't be anything on that. This Right now, this is all the zero volts. And until you complete that, you uh, change the, uh, you know, the potential between these two um, to where electricity will pass, there won't be anything there. And that's normal. You know, if you come over here to check with your 24 volts at terminal 4, you shouldn't see anything unless you push that button, have your operator push that button and then check the 24. There should be 24 volts there. Okay. Um, clean this up just a little bit. So. Remember this, e-stops are always in series, okay? They're kind of like the choo-choo train. If one car gets disconnected, the, everything after that car uh, it gets left behind, the electricity will keep on going. It'll be the same thing here. If we got electricity here and we push that, that electricity stops going through here, okay? But let's, uh, let me redo this.
I'm going to bring this back around here, okay? So we have a start here. We have our armature, A1, A2 here. Our normally closed overload, 95, 96. If we've got, these are stops. All our stops are in series, okay? But our starts Now we still have we still have our latch. Okay. So 13, 14, 3, 4, 3, 4. Okay. So what this is going to do for you, any one of these stops will cut the power to that armature if it's latched. Okay, but if you've got two stations, say you're, uh, you have a conveyor line and you've got a start point at the end of the conveyor line, you have a start point at the beginning, <laughs> one e-stop, one stop, and one start is going to be at each one of those locations, okay? And they're all wired up the same. They're all wired in series for the, your stops, and all of your, your uh, starts are in parallel, Okay, parallel is kind of like being on the interstate. You got four cars running abreast. You're going through uh, L.A. on I-10. Four cars abreast. Either one of those cars can get can can go to the the exit. It's not a problem. Okay. So with this, if I press this button, this electricity will pass through here and start this. If I press this button, because all of these threes and thirteens, they all have 24 volts at them. So any one of these I press, it'll pass electricity to here, which will go through the normally closed set of overloads to here, which will cause that electromagnetic force in that uh, armature to uh, pull in, which will close these, normally open latch, and it'll cause the latch. So now electricity's passing through here, and it'll, and your motor will stay on. Somebody presses any one of the stop buttons, it'll, it'll uh, cause that armature to collapse, which will open that set of contacts, and you'll have to start all over again. Okay? I hope this uh, helps. I hope... Uh, I'm going to do some more stuff with this. We'll get into uh, jog circuits, a couple of different ways that uh, you'll see jog circuits in there um, using contact relays and stuff like that. Um, but if you have questions uh, or comments, please put them down there in the, uh, in the comment section. And uh, please spread the word. If you got somebody who's interested in this, if there's something you guys want to go over, um, please let me know. I'll be happy to put it together uh, for you. Okay. Until then, you guys be safe out there.